Today's dive computers are considered an essential piece of your scuba kit. The days of utilizing the recreational dive planner are past. This presentation has been developed to provide you with information on what you should know and understand about your dive computer. It is critically important that you understand your dive computer. You must be able to navigate around the various screens and menus to ensure that you know what your computer is telling you and where to find information. More importantly, you must set up the dive computer properly so you know why the computer is functioning the way it does. Remember that your dive computer is a vital piece of safety equipment to help you reduce the risks associated with scuba diving. Today's dive computers come with a wide array of features and functions, from air integration to onboard oxygen sensors to brightly colored displays. The dive computer has come a very long way. Like all products in today's market, these added features and functions come with a price. So you will need to balance the features and functions with the investment that you're willing to make in a dive computer. Just remember, there are a lot of quality dive computers on the market. You get to decide. Let's start our discussion with a key feature which is the heart of your dive computer, the decompression algorithm. These algorithms are based on the same level of research regarding how your body absorbs nitrogen. There are, however, some differences in how the mathematical models for the various algorithms are implemented. Some models may be more conservative than others. Even though they are slightly different, they are all rigorously tested and designed to minimize the risk of decompression sickness. If you dive with a backup computer that has a different algorithm, be aware that you may see some differences in your no decompression limits. Dive computer displays have gotten a lot better over the years. Today it is not uncommon to have a dive computer with a bright colored display. These colored displays do not really require a backlight for reading your computer in low light situations, especially night dives. Also, there are dive computers that allow you to adjust the brightness of the display. Most importantly, you need to be able to see and read your computer. The small watch dial might look great on the boat, but once you get underwater, are you still able to see what the computer is displaying? All computers have a menu structure to allow you to set up your computer as well as cycle through important information related to your dive. You'll want to understand the menu structure. Is it simple and intuitive to understand? And more importantly, is navigation through the various areas easy? Sometimes people don't properly set up their dive computer because the menus seem too complicated. Going hand in hand with the menu structure and equally important are the buttons. Dive computers can come with one, two, three, or four buttons for paging through the various screens entering information, or setting parameters. Some computers allow you to adjust the sensitivity of the buttons. You will need to ensure that you understand the purpose and function of each button on your computer. There are basically two types of batteries that power your computer, replaceable or rechargeable. The replaceable battery, like the AA, CR2450, or CR2032. Many of the new dive computers that use replaceable batteries are made so you, the user, can replace the battery. Some models require you to send it to a service technician to replace the battery. Just be sure that you are comfortable in replacing the battery on your computer, as you need to make sure that the O-ring is properly seated. Having a spare battery is highly recommended. Rechargeable computers are also very common. Just remember to bring the charger with you when you go on a dive trip and that you have enough power before starting a dive. You need to consider how you want to carry the dive computer. You can either have the dive computer wrist mounted or in a console attached to your HP hose. A key advantage of the wrist mount is that the computer is very accessible and just a slight arm movement from your being able to read it. The console does require that you bring the HP hose from its stored position into your field of vision. 
You also can choose between a watch style dive computer or a larger version that are called pucks or bricks. Brick is just the style name and not indicative of the overall size and weight. Whichever you choose, as we mentioned, when talking about the display, make sure you can read it. There are quite a few other features that you will want to consider. A big consideration is air integration. This is a very convenient way to monitor your gas supply, plus providing you with details on your surface air consumption rate and gas time remaining. Computers also come with digital compasses and or GPS integration for navigation. Bluetooth is becoming very mainstream with dive computers for keeping them up to date, setting parameters, and downloading dive information. More and more features continue to be added like an onboard oxygen sensor for nitrox diving. Vibration alerts are also an added feature for some systems. As I said, when we start talking about your dive computer, you get to decide which features and functions you want when making your purchase. Now that we covered the key features of the dive computer, let's talk about using your dive computer. I think about four main areas that you will need to understand to get the most out of your computer. First, you must set up the computer properly for the dive that you are conducting. You can then use it to plan your dive. This is particularly useful when doing repetitive dives as you can track your no decompression limits across your surface interval. Once in the water, understanding how the dive mode operates is essential, how and where the information is displayed, and how alerts work. Finally, we'll take a look at the dive log. You'll get the most out of your dive computer and be in a better position to manage the risks in diving by becoming proficient across these four broad areas. For the rest of our discussion, we will be using the Shearwater Peregrine to demonstrate how to use your dive computer. You will see how Shearwater covers these four main areas. Other computers approach some of the functions differently, and it is your responsibility to understand how it works. It is critical that you read your dive computer's manual to properly operate the dive computer. Yes, it is your computer. You shouldn't be that diver who asks the dive master or boat crew how to work yours. Let's start by talking about setting the mode for your computer. This is how the Peregrine looks when you navigate to the mode setup screen. This is where you set the mode of operation. For most recreational divers, the selection will be either air or nitrox. Many computers have a selection for gauge mode that turns the computer into a bottom timer. The Peregrine also gives you a three gas nitrox setting for those who are looking at more advanced diving. You can also set up uh, for the salt versus freshwater environment. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute or two. Let's skip over gas O2 percentage for now. You also can set the maximum operating depth, partial pressure oxygen, Hopefully you know what that means, and it's highly recommended that you keep your PPO2 at 1.4. Let's go through a quick example of how to change the mode. From the mode setup display, you'll notice two buttons labeled in the lower left, which is next, and the lower right, edit. When you press the edit button, the yellow triangle cursor will move down to the mode menu item. Then. When you select Edit again, notice that the air selection is now underlined, and your button selections have now changed to Change and Save. When you press Change, Nitrox is now displayed as the mode. When you hit Save, you have now enabled the Nitrox mode. Notice that the gas O2 percentage is no longer grayed out. It is set to 32%. This setting is based on the nitrox gas that you have defined. The buttons have also reverted to Next and Edit. Again, this is just an example of how the Shearwater Peregrine works. Remember, every dive computer is different when it comes to menus and setup. From the Mode Setup screen, you can, as I mentioned earlier, change the salinity settings. 
Your options are the default EN13319 setting, which is a European standard that is a blend between both salt and fresh water. Or if you like, you can adjust the salinity to either salt or fresh. Salt water is denser than fresh water, so this will impact your depth display, while changing it doesn't affect your decompression calculation. We're going to skip over changing the mod PPO2 for now. Let's now move to the deco setup. You'll see that this computer tells you the algorithm being used. In this case, the Bullman GFZHL-16C. Should you want to change the conservatism setting on your, uh, on your computer, you get a choice between low, medium, and which is the default, and high or custom. This setting is changing the gradient factors, thus changing the no decompression limits. A detailed discussion on gradient factors is beyond the scope of this session, and if you choose to go into the custom setting, you really need to have a full understanding of this adjustment. The last stop setting is only available for the three gas nitrox mode and has two settings, 10 or 20 feet. And finally, you can change the safety stop. The default setting is ADAPT. Normally, ADAPT will have a three minute safety stop unless you exceed 100 feet or your NDL dips below five minutes. The computer will then display a five minute safety stop. You can also turn it off or you can set the safety stops at three, four, or five minutes. If you are so inclined, you can set the peregrine to count up from zero on your safety stop. Alerts can be an important safety setting. As you can see here, we can set depth, time, and low NDL on this computer. Most computers have similar settings. The Peregrine can also provide you with a vibration alert. Computers also come with audible alerts. You will need to understand how each computer displays an alert and also if and how you need to acknowledge the warning. You'll want to make sure that your units of measurement are set up for your preference, metric or imperial, depth in feet or meters, temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. We can also set the peregrine screen brightness, cave, low, medium, high, or auto. The altitude setting is not accessible, and if you want, you can flip the screen in the other direction. One last area that we'll cover in setting up your dive computer, and in my opinion, it is important, but sometimes ignored, is setting the correct date and time. Remember that there are time changes. Remember your log is going to use the date and time from your computer. The log rate determines how often the computer adds samples to the dive log. You can uh, set it for either two seconds, five seconds, or 10 second interval. The 10 second sampling rate will give you up to 200 hours of detailed logs. If you sample more often, that number will go down. The NDL planner is accessed from the dive setup uh, selection. You'll get a list of no decompression limits based on the gas you are breathing. In this case, we are seeing the times associated with Nitrox 32. But before we get to this display, we have to make another selection. When you first enter the NDL planner, it will ask you when you want to start your next dive. This is a great tool if you're sitting on the boat and want to know how much no decompression time you'll have 30 minutes from now. You can see from this display that you can plan right now or adjust it from 15 minutes all the way up to one day. When you adjust this setting, the NDL list will be calculated with the time added to your surface interval. When you are ready to go diving and when you start up the computer, most will go into a surface mode and you'll get some basic information. For this computer, you can easily check your surface interval and in this example, you've been out of the water for one hour and 15 minutes. You also get a visual display of the battery power. 
The depth of your last dive is shown along with the current temperature and time. Another critical piece of information is the gas setting for your computer. Here, the last setting was Nitrox 30. Nitrox mixes can change based on a variety of factors. It is your responsibility to adjust this setting based on the tank that you have analyzed and that you're going to use on the next dive. Let's assume that your afternoon dive will use a 32 mix. Let's run through a quick example of setting your gas properly. As you can see, the surface mode shows that the computer is set for Nitrox 30. When we analyzed our tank for the afternoon dive, it came in at 32%. So we need to change the computer, and we can do that by navigating to the defined gas screen. For this example, we hit the next button and then move the yellow cursor under the zero. Pressing change will move it up, and when you get to two, you hit save. When you go back to the surface mode screen, you'll see that you have properly set the computer for the mix that you will be diving, Nitrox 32. When diving, your computer will provide you with the primary information to reduce your risk while diving. In this case, we have the primary information on the top of the display to include our current depth, how long we've been diving, our ascent rate indicated by the chevrons to the right of the depth, our no decompression limit, and the computed safety stop. This computer also provides a graphic display of the nitrogen loading to the right of the NDL. The bottom row displays other information like your gas setting, max depth, current time, and temperature. You can make some changes to how the bottom row is configured. We are not going to cover that here. Also, you can scroll through various information screens displayed in the bottom row. Again, that is beyond the scope of this course and is clearly articulated in your user manual. Here's a little more uh, on the ascent rate indicators. Each chevron represents an ascent rate of 10 feet per minute. When the bottom three are colored white, you are, your ascent rate is between 10 and 30 feet per minute. When you go above 30 feet per minute but less than 60 feet, all five will turn yellow. Exceeding an ascent rate of 60 feet per minute will turn all six red, plus they will start flashing. Now that we have completed a dive, you can use the computer's dive log function to get all the details regarding the dives that you have made. This is an example of how the Peregrine provides information in the dive log. You can see that you are provided with a list of the dives, and then when you uh, view the specific dive, you'll get a wealth of information, including things like the max depth, the average depth, start and stop time, and a whole lot more. As we talked about earlier, the Peregrine can hold up to 200 hours of data at a 10 second sampling rate. We're going to wrap up our discussion with another feature that many dive computers leverage today, and that is cloud-based apps that sync with your computer via Bluetooth. You can download your dives and then enter details, information, and pictures for that dive. Additionally, these apps allow you to keep your dive computer updated with the latest releases. Let's finish up our discussion. Remember, your dive computer is a critical piece of your scuba kit, and you get to choose your computer based on the features, functions, and price. To get the most from your dive computer, make sure you have it set up properly, can access the planning mode, understand the information while diving, and finally, get to look at your dives in the logbook. It's your responsibility to know what the computer is telling you and why. And like I said at the beginning, dive computers are very powerful and affordable in today's market. You should never be in the water without one.